Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Astronomy 100. Today is Monday, August 23rd. Uh, again, this session is going to be recorded for those who are not uh, able to attend live for some reason or the other. We still have assignments. We have, as a matter of fact, today uh, a lot of discussion points that need to emerge from this uh, this session. So I'm hopefully hoping that you guys who are live, first of all, to take notes. At some point, you will be required to pick up a piece of paper and a uh, pen and start doing things with me. That's one thing. And uh, for those who are not live, for those who are watching the recording, you still are required to do the same thing. So I'm going to post this recording in the evening, hopefully, and I post it to your session so that you guys see this, uh, this recording and also do the same things. As I am saying, as I was saying, basically we have a few items of discussion from this one that emerge. In addition to, we have, uh, we're going to conclude today, basically, the type of work that you're going to be doing in this classroom. So we're going to show you the third way, or the third thing that you'll be doing in this classroom. So this is basically, uh, concludes the introduction, if you wish, of the class, so that you guys have a feel of what needs to be done. So let me share with you the screen to see where we stand on things. Share. Share. And I want to share this screen in here. I'm looking at your class in here as if I am a student. I need at least one person to confirm. I have my chat session open that you guys are looking in terms of what says astro, astro astronomy 100-08. Yes. yes. Or no? Okay, very good. So basically, I'm looking at it as an vantage points as a student, basically from that perspective. And I see uh, week two in here for you guys. And in week two, it has a bunch of things in it. So I'm going to talk about what these things mean. But before I do that, there is a very, very urgent matter that needs to be taken care of. I know I talked about it last week, but I want to make sure that you guys have done it. Okay, it's very important. The thing that needs to be done is if you go to the syllabus, you will see when there's the section that says textbooks and resources, a link in there that says Telerium program. That Telerium program, if you click on it, it should take you to a page. Let me stop sharing that screen and go to the page and share the page and how it looks like. This is how the page should look like. Namely, it has the Stellarium software. The latest version is 0 0.21.1. Doesn't matter which version you have, even all this slightly old. I mean, the newer versions are best, of course, because they have more information in it and more stuff to use and things like that. I assume most of you either have a Windows machine or a, a, an Apple machine. So by now, you should have installed this program and tested it in either of the two. If you have a Windows machine, one of these two should work. Most of the time, this one should work. The 32 bit should work fine. If you have a, a Linux, I mean, an Apple machine, this version should have been, the, the, you should be able to install it on it. In the rare occasion, if you have a Linux machine, either of this, one of this should work. Okay, not all of them. One of these should work, and you have the program installed. If you cannot do any of that, because, for example, the computer is not yours, it's on a loaner, or for some reason you cannot install stuff on it, because these programs, for example, if you have one of those uh, uh, Go uh, app, what is it, Windows uh, Go, uh, what do you call them? Forgot what they're called, anyway, computers where they have only limited programs that you can install on them. And if you try, you cannot because for any, one reason or the other, then you still have this option as a backup plan where you can go online and actually use the software still. So there is really no problem whatsoever. Now, if for some reason you cannot use that, I need to know that. So item one of the discussion is the following. You're going to tell me that you either have installed the software and you're ready to go, I have an Apple or I have Windows and I installed the program and it tested and everything is ready. Or 
I could not install it on the machine for one reason or the other, it doesn't matter. But I, 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 have, I was able to get into the website and actually experiment with it and I know how it works. Now I can confidently say I'm ready. If for some reason, one of the other two does not work or you have problems still, I need to know that. So item one of the discussion should be to tell me where you stand on Stellarium. Make sense? Yes. Okay, very good. So I really need to know where you guys are at because it's very, very important in terms of that. We cannot do stuff down the road that is important for us to understand and follow the topics that we have. And I will tell you exactly that today there is actually an activity that is going to be related to that. So I'm gonna stop sharing the screen and we have an understanding of what the first item of the discussion is. So we can, can, we can basically safely do what we need to do. But uh, what is the screen here? Okay, so let me make sure I leave it and I come back as soon as you again. And let me share the screen. Let me go back into where we were before. Before getting into the syllabus, namely a homepage. Again, I assume that you guys have done all of that. It is very, very important to understand that units, namely one and two and three are actually the meat of uh, the, the thing, they are actually the bulk of what we're supposed to be doing in here. Three units, you were supposed to read them in the book, going systematically about them. This are just to help you navigate your way through them. In addition, what I did, I recorded the take or my take on these three units. This is not in lieu of there are 10 minutes or roughly about 10 minutes each per unit in this week one review. So this is does not excuse you from reading. You still have to do the readings in here because some of my recordings in here are just my own interpretations of these units. I could be wrong, in which case your duty is to correct me. Some of the information I post there may be outdated. So you need to correct it. Sometimes I, and I do make a lot of mistakes. So you really have to make sure you go through these units because you're accountable for their content. When exam times came in, when assignments come in, they're going to come from this units. They're not gonna come from this one. So it's still, you have to do the readings in here. And for that, as a guide, is this review in here. So that is, we're going to be expecting this type of things. In addition to that, I also have this page that summarizes the concept still, but don't rely on this too. Rely on your own readings as you go systematically about them. If you have a question, if you don't understand something, please shoot me an email. Tell me the page number, tell me the question, tell me the example that they tried to work out and for some reason you still don't agree with it because you think the answer should be different, please let me know so that we can move on. Okay, so this is very, very important. Today's session will be, after it's posted, it's going to be recorded in here. And uh, whether you are attending live or uh, coming, uh, watching the recording, it's going to be here. And the items of the discussion will be posted in here. One of them, has to do with where you stand on Stellarium. So in other words, this is where you come in and you post your replies. Do not start posting your replies immediately after you watch the recording and you see item one and you post item one. Because if you post then, and there is another item that pops up down the road and there will be today, then uh, you cannot go back and edit it because if you edit it, you nullify what you have done. So please hold on to your posting until the session is completely over, number one. Or if you're watching the recording also, remember, uh, watch the entire recording and then post if you're confident in them. And you don't have to be, uh, you don't have to worry about the grammar. You don't have to worry about the English. I mean, try to get your idea across as much as possible clear so that we have those items so that you tell me that you are following and doing your work. So this is again, and you're gonna see this every week. 
So this is going to be every week you're going to see it. In addition to that, we have this week's units. We started one, two, three, and now we're in four, five, six. Okay, we're moving on. So again, you're supposed to be doing the readings on your own, doing the examples in there. If you have any problems, you let me know. Today, I'm going to try to summarize what these units are and that you still have to do the readings down the road. I hope to include another recording for week three that covers this stuff. Do not rely on those. If you do, you are making a big mistake because you really are uh, sh uh, shooting yourself in the foot because when exam times come in, that is where we're going to be pulling stuff from. Okay. There is an activity that we need in here, and I'm going to talk about that. So this is basically where we stand on these things. So this is how the units are going to look like from this point on. There is actually another item that is going to pop up. Okay. So we're going to leave that for unit three or for week three. So you're going to see something else also that is going to be different. And from this point on, you will have basically a feel of how these things are. Roughly, this is a skeleton for the next weeks, in addition to a couple of items that will be popping up from here and there, depending on where we stand on the course. So this is basically in a nutshell what's going on. It is very, very important to know the following. We have an assignment from last week. And that assignment is due, it has two parts in it. One of them is due this Thursday, and the other part is due this Saturday. And both of them combine for a total of 20 points. Now, you have to do them for two reasons. First of all, you're going to miss points if you don't do them. Second, if you don't do anything in this class, if you don't start getting involved in this class and working your stuff, doing things, we are required, the college is required to uh, report to students who do not engage in the classroom as being absent, and they will be dropped from the class. And there is a deadline coming, I think, early in uh, September, where we have to submit the students who need to be dropped from the class. No, no, not to be dropped from the class. You really have to, to do this thing. So I don't do attendance. Some of you, a lot of you actually are not present right now in the live session. And when it's not live, there is no way for me to know who's doing what. I know trying to do the assignments for the uh, discussion items, but those sometimes have a due date that is way past, way past the uh, the deadline for the uh, for the uh, where to report this. It's called the census, by the way, where to report those information. But this is what I'm going to base your attendance or lack thereof in the class based on your submissions in here. So it's very important to do them for two reasons. First of all, to get the grade for them, which is important. And second, so that you don't get dropped from the class, okay? Which is, that's really why it's important in here. So this is in terms of the mechanics and in terms of the administrative things for this class where we have things. Any questions about this part? No. Very good, thank you. So I hope that the people who are watching this one recorded, they are also understanding the importance of these things. They have to uh, take care of these things, okay? So let me uh, go into this unit, unit by unit, to discuss what is coming from this chapter so that we have we know what we're doing in here, okay? So uh, let me first of all stop sharing the screen and share unit four. And share now unit four. So this is just to help us basically see what we have to do in terms of the concepts that are covered in this, this section now, in this units four, five, and six, okay? Four, five, and six. Unit four talks about the, first of all, describe the scientific method and from formulate a sample hypothesis and explain the difference between them 
those two are related. These two objectives are related. One of them is understanding it, and the second is to do actually the process. One of the things that we hope to achieve from this class, and the textbook actually focuses on it, is the scientific method. The scientific method, if you wish, is like a prescription. For example, if you want to cook your, 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 your best meal, whatever, breakfast or lunch, and you usually follow a recipe of some sort. You follow steps, step one, two, three, and four, okay? And those steps, they most of the time happen in the order that they are prescribed, in the sense that they always start from one, then go to step two, step three, and so on and so forth. Think of it, the scientific method is in that way. And it's really a check and balance system to make sure that the, the there is rigor, and there is integrity, and there is honesty, in the in the in the process so that we can trust the discovery so it's very very important to really follow the scientific method and uh, it was uh, basically uh, it was started of course in physics and later on borrowed in all kinds of science uh, 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 science explorations and it's also used extensively in astronomy and uh, we will use that. We will actually refer to the scientific method whenever we have some new idea to explore and to see where we stand in it. We build a model based on our observations or based on our experiments. And we test that model to see, is it correct? Is it going to really be true? And how we can improve on it, okay? Or how we can explore it or how, does it explain other things? And if there is any failure in it, we have to abandon it and come up with a new model. So that is really the, the, the whole essence of this thing, so that we have this, 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 this scientific method. One of the things we're supposed to do this week, and it's due this Thursday, is a flat earth project. And if you put that to the test, to the scientific method, you will find that it's not really scientific at all. And it fails the model, it fails the approach. So it's really not science. So that is really one of the things that we want to achieve from this class. There is also another word of warning and caution that everybody has to be careful with when we talk about the word theory. When we say theory in science in general, we really mean a, a, a collection of knowledge, a body of knowledge that we have accumulated and it is really, it goes way beyond interpretation. It's just, it's really a lot of things put together. One idea does not make a theory. One experiment does not make a theory. You really have to build on it more experiments and more conclusions and more descriptions. And you come up with a model that describes that. Then you have a theory. So a theory is not an opinion. It's not like, uh, okay, a better, okay, I'm thinking of something, so maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. No, 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 theory is much, much stronger than that in science. So this is a word of caution I have to talk about. I mean, we're going to talk, for example, about the theory of Big Bang or the theory, for example, for the dark matter, and you will see the, the, the knowledge associated with that and where we are led to it and how we can, the experiments that basically... Uh, 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 led to it and the observations that led to it and the further explanations that we can use for that. So it's not a matter of opinion. It's not like, oh, somebody thought it and maybe he's, he or she is just from thin air. So it's not really like that. So this is the things that I would want to emphasize on. And we're going to talk about that. Then the other thing also is the periodic table in this unit. The periodic table has some key elements in it. At least the one that is used in this textbook has more elements in it than a chemist, for example, use. And in addition to the atomic number and the, uh, then, uh, the, atomic, uh, the atomic mass and all of the other properties that are typically in uh, periodic tables, we have other information, for example, the abundance in the universe and where these materials were formed and so on and so forth. So this is important. Also, uh, the list of the fundamental forces. There are four fundamental forces in nature. Okay. Four fundamental forces in nature. I cannot list all of the elementary particles, of course, in normal matter. I mean, protons, electrons, and protons and neutrons, those are the what forms the atom. Ordinary matter, that is. Non-ordinary matter, we don't know what it has. Okay. And of course, the proton and neutron themselves are really not elementary particles. They are made up of tiny stuff in them, quarks and other things, okay? 
But the forces, the forces, we have four forces in nature. In terms of the strength, the weakest is the force of gravity. And it's super weak, actually. As a matter of fact, it's extremely weak compared to the next one, which is the so-called nuclear weak force. The force of gravity, albeit extremely weak, is the one that holds the entire universe together, the entire galaxy together. What holds us on Earth, what holds the Earth together is the force of gravity or being extremely weak. I mean, you cannot imagine how weak it is. It's 10 to the negative 40 compared to the force of electricity and magnetism like that, okay? So this is one. The next one that comes in is actually the so-called weak nuclear force. And the weak nuclear force is responsible for radioactivity, which is really what heats up the core of the earth. And then, that what comes after that, electricity and magnetism, the force that is responsible for that. And that is the force that is responsible for everyday applications, basically friction, for example, light, for example, computers, your phone, everything else is based on electricity and magnetism. So that is the one next. And the strongest of, of them all is a strong nuclear force. This is the force that hold the nucleus together, that hold the proton together. If this force was not there, the proton would not exist. And if the proton doesn't exist, or the neutron does not exist, and if there's two elementary particles do not exist, nothing exists. Okay? So those are the four, force, uh, the four forces of nature. And uh, there is a relationship between each and every one of them. And they are independent of one another. And there is an interesting topic later on down the road in the course that we're going to discuss in terms of how the universe evolved according to these forces. Okay. And then we describe how particles interact and, and on their mass, their mass and kinds of charges. This is again force of gravity and electrostatic force. So this is unit four. Okay. So hopefully you, you guys can read through it. And if you have any questions, you ask me. And then we're going to have summary for this unit, just like we did with unit one and two and three. Uh, I mean, a recording for it, I should say. So let's look at unit five. Let me share screen. For unit five, describe the celestial sphere. If you go outside tonight and look at the sky, it looks like it's some sort of a dome. Whichever direction you look, it's like a dome. Okay. The thing with it is, you can look at the east, the west, between them is the north, and behind you is the south. That is if you face uh, north. Okay. You face the north. You start from the east and you go 90 degrees across, you will find the north. You go 90 deg degrees on the other side, you will find the west. You go 90 degrees on the uh, past the west, you're gonna find the south. You go another 90 degrees, you come back to the, uh, to the east. This is 360 degrees. Now, if you look at the north, for example, right from the horizon, right into the horizon and you Go 90 degrees above, you look up, and that is the zenith. That is the top of the, uh, the dome. This is basically the celestial sphere. That is its top. If you go another 90 degrees, you're going to back into the horizon behind you, and that is 180 degrees. So all you need is 360 degrees to describe the region next to you, and another 180 degrees, and you have described this dome. The reason why you cannot go beyond is because beyond the horizon, you cannot see anything. The horizon is actually the other side of the earth that you cannot see because the horizon blocks you. But if you can do, that is actually the southern hemisphere, the other side of the planet. So this is basically the, uh, the, uh, the celestial. And you can locate objects in the sky based on this, on these things. Obviously, this is just a representation because the real thing is actually has depth in it. So if you look at, Polaris, about 38 degrees or so, depending on where you are, you will see, I mean, if you look at the horizon in the north, you will see Polaris, okay? You look at the other direction in here, you see other stars and so on and so forth. But those they change locations except with the exception of Polaris. So this is some of the concepts that we're gonna be looking at in this unit. Uh, list points of reference, I mentioned Zenith, there is a, the uh, horizon and other directions that you're going to use explain the daily motion of the sky and how they differ at different latitudes, estimate the distance of the objects from the cell using coordinates. 
this is related to what is coming next in this week, okay? There is an activity that is coming from the Stellarium. So let me stop sharing the screen and go to the last unit. And I'm going to talk about this point in here. Also, when we talk about the uh, share, unit six. Okay. Again, unit six, describe the annual motions of the sun relative to the stars on your horizon. That's, that's what you're going to be doing, actually. Read the unit. It's very important to read it and then complete the last activity, which I'm going to talk about immediately. Recall the dates and names of the sun reaches extreme midway. Define the ecliptic and the zodiac uh, signs and the Earth. All of this are related to the next activity, which I'm on the two items before in the previous unit also. And then explain why, how and why solar heating varies during the year. And that is because again, how the orientation of the earth is the way earth is spinning it's the axis of the earth is tilted about 23 degrees versus that of the ecliptic okay and then describe the earth's precession because the earth right now it's 23 degrees and it's actually processes right now it points to the north pole it points to the north pole points to the uh, polaris but down the road is actually going to point somewhere else. It's going to point toward Vega at some point and then come back to Polaris and so on. There is a procession. So that's going to impact the uh, Earth overall motion. So let me uh, stop sharing the screen in here. I hope that you guys finish the readings of all of these three uh, units. And again, I, will, I promise I will have a recording for you guys next week. So let me share where we were. What is the... Uh, Okay, so this completes basically units four and five and six. So I expect you guys to do the reading on these units and you will have an understanding of what needs to be done and so on and so forth. So the next one is this activity. So you are supposed to complete this activity. This activity is a very important activity and it's step by step. So you're going to start the Stellarium program. Remember the first prompt of this discussion today? It has to do to tell me how ready you are. So I really wanna make sure that you are ready. If you're not, please reach out so that we really have to make sure so that we have this is ready for it, okay? So we need to get first prompt first before we do this. So at this point, I assume that we are ready and you have a, a Stellarium ready to complete it. It has a prescription step of, by step what to do. And it's going to help you through units five and six to understand how to answer uh, those questions. It has actually built in questions to, uh, to, uh, to help you do that. This is not a graded activity, but down the road, it will be graded. So down the road, you will have similar activities that will be graded. So it's very important to get us to, to do these things. So you have all kinds of ways of doing it. If you have problems, please let me know so that you do this one. Which brings me to the second item of the discussion today. The second item of the discussion is, I will read this units and complete this task. And if I have any difficulty, I will reach out for help. So this is the second item of the, 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 the discussion in here. I wanna make sure that you're committed to doing that. Make sense? Yes. That's good. Yes. Okay, very good. So we are on board for this one in here. Make sure we read this units and complete. This is a step by step. Now, if you have a problem, it tells you at some point, click C, click B, click K, and so on and so forth. And let's say, for example, you have things completely out of control. Let's say, for example, you're supposed to click L about six times and you clicked it seven times or eight times, and now things are flying and you have no control over them. There is a way to go back so that you slow it down, but the other way also, you could shut down the program and restart it, okay? Or if it's a page, a web page, or you're doing the web version of it, just refresh the page and it's going to take you back to where you started from, okay? So this is an easy way to come back to it because you're supposed to go step by step by step. It tells you to do this, then do that, then do that. At the same time, sometimes the same step has several, several uh, tiny steps in it. So you have to do them in order and take note of what you're looking at. And first of all, see the questions that you're asked so that you can answer them, okay? 
So the intent of this activity is to get you familiar again with the Stellarium software and make sure you understand the concepts covered in units five and six. So again, the item of the discussion is I will read these units and try to complete this, this activity. If for some reason I have difficulty, I will reach out for help. The difficulty could be one of many. One of them is potentially the software is still not working right for you. Or for example, the instructions are not clear. Or for example, the question after you do all of the instructions still not clear on the, uh, what to put in the answer in there. So it could be any of those. So reach out for help on these things. Don't leave it so that you don't know what to do. So we have two items so far for the discussion. The first one is how ready you are in terms of stellar, Stellarium overall. And the second one is your commitment to do these things in this whole talk. So those are the two items so far, okay? So this is in a nutshell what we have coming. I know this has a lot of weight coming in terms of uh, grades. And this one also is important, completing this answers in here, but don't forget the, the way you're gonna be tested in how well you do in these units, okay? Again, I will have another recording next week that is going to give you an insight into this uh, units more. And uh, I'm relying, first of all, giving you a chance to go through them to give you my input on them. This is more or less your skeleton for the next week's models. This is what most of the time are gonna be seeing in here. There will be an additional item, one or more, depending, okay? For sure there will be one more, but you could have another one. And I will talk about the next time of type of uh, item uh, immediately, okay? That's going to bring us to the, the third type of activity that we will see in this class that will be required to do to complete things. So this is so far everything in here. So what I'm going to do now, and this is the third type of activities, is to go back to units one and two and three and pick up problems from them and try to work them out with you guys. I'm going to post the solutions later on still on Canvas so that you see it. But I want you at this point to grab a piece of paper and a pen and the book. So I'm gonna give you about a minute or two to get your materials ready so that we can do the next part, okay? The type of math that we will be required to do in here and how we're going to work with, uh, with uh, on these things. And it sounds kind of daunting, but there is a plan. And that is going to be item three actually of discussion and how to tackle this kind of problem so that we don't have an issue so they don't have really a problem and they don't seem as daunting as they probably could. As a matter of fact, they would be just a walk in the park, okay? So this is going to be the third item. So at this point, I am basically stalling to allow you guys, even those who are not watching live, to grab a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil and the, uh, the book, okay? Because we're going to go through this units one, two, and three, and uh, do examples from them. So I'm gonna stop sharing that screen, and I'm going to grab my piece of paper, which is here, actually, it's gonna be the screen, and I'm gonna make a big line in here, okay? And it's called applications, and this is my pen. Okay, and I'm grabbing the fifth edition. The fifth edition and the sixth edition are similar up to this point. I didn't see any differences whatsoever. If you don't have the textbook, I'm going to try to read this ones in here for you. That's why I really did not start with the assignment because I give time for people to grab their materials. Some of you have an electronic version of the book, which is fine. If you still have it, that's fine, okay? Now, when it comes to assignment time, what I'm going to try to do also is actually post the actual question for you guys on Canvas. So uh, I'll try to help as much as I can, but you, there is no avoiding reading those two units from the book, okay? So you really have to have the book up to this point. So I'm grabbing the book right now, 
and I'm looking at page eight from the book. And for that, I'm going to focus on problem 11. So it's on this page in the book, in the textbook, okay? And I read it and uh, we will see what it means, okay? So even if you don't really have the book at this point, you should be able to follow. Now, if there is an assignment from this book, and there will be, I will try, especially if you don't have the book, I will try to either take a picture of the page and post it so that you guys can do the assignment or actually type the actual problem that for you guys in there. One of the two, depending on how it goes, okay? So in the book, problem 11, page 11, I mean, page eight, it tells you the following. What would be the circumference and diameter? And between parentheses, they wrote the following. Circumference is equal to pi times diameter. So what they're saying in here is circumference is equal to pi, which is a number, by the way. Pi is just a number, 3.14, times uh, the diameter. So the circumference and the diameter are proportional to one another. In other words, just the difference between them is a number, 3.14, that's all, okay? And uh, what the question was, what would be the circumference and diameter of a ball that would represent the moon if Earth were a volleyball? So here is the Earth, a volleyball. The question is, how big the moon is? That's the question. Is it this big, is it this big, is it this big? Depending, okay. I really don't have a volleyball. I don't play volleyball. <laughs> I have a soccer ball, because I play soccer. So I'm going to assume that this is basically the, the, the Earth. And I'm going to see how big the moon is going to be compared to the Earth if the Earth were a soccer ball. Soccer ball is slightly bigger than the, uh, the volleyball, but it turns out that there are very little difference between them. Anyway, depending on how much inflation you have in them, if you have too much air, then it's going to be more than, uh, it depends on that. But if you look at problem 10, it tells you if you use a volleyball as a model of the earth, how big would one kilometer be on it? And they tell you the volleyball has a circumference of 68 centimeters. So they tell you in the previous problem that the circumference, which is the distance from this point going around on the sphere is 68 centimeters. That's what the circumference is. So if I want to do the circumference on this soccer ball, I really have to measure starting from this point in here, go around and come back from the other side and come back to the same point. That is what the circumference is. And it's related to, if I puncture the ball in here and come out to, from here, from this side, that distance from end to end is going to be my, uh, my, uh, my diameter. So that's what this relationship is saying. So the diameter is twice the radius, by the way. So the diameter is this straight out distance. So that is the diameter. And the circumference is everything in here, going on a full circle. We will find out, we will find out, okay? We will do it actually, the question was to do this, thing, okay? So we'll see. So, uh, so let's find the diameter of the earth, if the earth was a volleyball or a soccer ball. So what we do in this case is, according to this formula, 68 centimeters, which is a diameter of the Earth, I mean, which is the circumference of the Earth, must be pi times its diameter. I'm, I'm lazy, I don't want to write diameter, so I'm going to write D for diameter. So from here, I can find what the diameter D of the Earth is, is going to be 68 centimeters divided by pi. If I put this on a calculator, 
it's going to be roughly, so it's a good idea to pull a calculator at this point and divide uh, 68 by pi. And the answer should be around very close, not exactly, close from 22 centimeters. So that is the radius of the earth. If it were a volleyball, if it were a soccer ball, it's going to be roughly about close from the same number. Actually, it's 64, I mean, uh, 24 centimeters. I did it earlier. So the soccer ball is about two centimeters in, 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 in uh, radius slightly more. So this is if it were a volleyball or soccer ball, I found to be slightly more. But the Earth is not 20 centi 22 centimeters in radius. The Earth is actually uh, 6,400 kilometers. So what I'm saying in here is 6,400 kilometers is 22 centimeters in this model. So this is called the scale. So I scaled the earth down from 6,400 kilometers down to uh, 22 centimeters. So I scaled it. In this scale, what would be the moon? The moon is a quarter. If you look at the uh, units, the moon has a radius, which is a quarter that of the earth. So it must be in my model also quarter of this distance. A quarter of 22 centimeters is about 5.5 centimeters. So if the Earth was a volleyball, it's about slightly more than 5 centimeters. And this is slightly more than 5 centimeters, actually. When I put it earlier, what is the centimeters? This way. So this was, so let me stop sharing the screen in here. Let's just stop sharing the screen in here. I'm not sharing, was I? That's no. bad. Sorry. <laughs> so again, this is in my scale. So this is 22 centimeters. That's my calculation. So I, what I did was divide by pi, and I found 22 centimeters. So 20 centimeters is the model, representing 6,400 kilometers. So a quarter of that put me around 5.5 centimeters. So again, I'm going to share with you the calculation, not as much detail as this one, but it should give you an insight into where we stand into this thing. So again, 5.5 centimeters is the radius of the Earth, again, of the moon, I'm sorry, in this scale. So this would be about that much. What is it? About in this side in here about this number, which is about 5.5. I know this is kind of a not transparent, but that's the scale. So in this scale, this is how the Earth and the Moon compare. This is the Moon, this is the Earth. Very big, isn't it? So this is an interesting problem, and this is the type of questions that you might be asked to do, and you should be able to answer. Okay. It's uh, telling you to go to the appendix. Please refer to the appendix for the actual diameters also. The appendix is, there's no number on this page, but it's the last basically page in the book, okay? It gives you the sizes of the earth, 6,378 kilometers in radius, and it gives you the size of uh, the moon, which is, where is the moon in here? I'll give you just the planets. We know the moon is about a fourth of that, okay? A fourth of the Earth. Okay, doesn't give you the uh, size of the Earth, the moon's uh, radius, but it's about a fourth of the uh, moon's uh, radius. So this is question, Eleven problem eleven from page eight. So this is the type of work that we're expected to do. This is the third kind of things that we need to do. So let me share with you the screen again, and so that we will do another one now, and that will be from the unit uh, unit two. So if you go to page 16 on unit two, for 
we're going to do question number 10. So this is the question that we're going to do or problem that we're going to do. So it says in here, if the Milky Way were the size of a nickel, about two centimeters, here is the Milky Way. So this is the Milky Way, it's about a nickel, okay? For some reason it's not focusing on it. So the earth and the sun will be about two thirds of the way from the center, okay? So this is the Milky Way. And they tell you in the problem about two centimeters in diameter, not in radius, in diameter. That means the radius is half as much. So, and I already put it on the, uh, on the ruler and it turns out to be correct, okay? It's about two centimeters, okay? It's about two centimeters. And here on the ruler, okay? Slightly more than two centimeters, but it doesn't matter. It's very, very tiny difference between two centimeters and it. So it's about two centimeters. That is the radius of the earth and it's a nickel. I mean, the uh, not the earth, the, <laughs> the, the Milky Way galaxy. And they have a question here Question A, how big would the local group be? For that, we're going to look at, and they tell you, use table 2.1. And table 2.1 is actually on page 14. I'm gonna use page 14 for that. So the diameter of the nickel, of the Milky Way then, because they tell you specifically that the Milky Way is a nickel and the diameter of the the Milky Way galaxy according to the table, according to the table. It's, if you look at the table, it tells you 50,000 light years. So the Milky Way is 50,000 light years in diameter. In this model, it's half a nickel and half a nickel is just one centimeter. So 50,000 light years is about one centimeter. That's exactly what this scale is. So now they want to know how would the local group be? How big would the local group would be? The local group is 1.5 or 1 million 500,000 light years. So this is the local group. <coughs> so that would be what in this scale? So what I do in this case, 1.5 million divided by 50,000 Cancel zero, zero, zero. So these three zeros are gone and this zero is gone. So all I have to do is put 1,500,000 and divide it over 50,000. And that should give me how many centimeters it is. So if we do that, this three zeros cancel. And so is this zero. And it will have 15 divided by two or by five. That's going to be uh, three, 30, basically. The answer is going to be 30 centimeters. This is the diameter, or this is the radius of actually the local group. So the diameter should be twice as much. So the diameter from end to end should be about 60 centimeters across. This ruler is 30 centimeters at most. So if this were the Milky Way, somewhere in here, it doesn't matter where you put it, I need two, two of this. I need another one in here. This would be the extent of the local group. So somewhere in this region, there is the other galaxies. There is about 40, 50 galaxies in the local group. One of them is Triangulum. The other one is Andromeda. The other ones are the Magellanic clouds, both uh, the, the large and the small. And actually the others are very close from the uh, our galaxy but they are actually in our local group. So this is the local group of the galaxies, about 60 centimeters in, 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 in uh, across. So this part has to do with the first part. So the second question was, <coughs> excuse me. The second part of the question, it's the same question, by the way, the same problem, by the way is how big would the local supercluster be? Well, the local supercluster, according to the table, is 50 million light years in radius. So we're gonna do the same thing. 
for the local supercluster the radius is 50 million light years but the galaxy is only 50,000 in radius so 50,000 light years for the galaxy and this is one centimeter by the way so this zeros cancel and so is this zero and this five cancels that five and we're left with one so it's going to be about one followed by three zeros so it's about 1000 centimeters because each one of them is a centimeter so this is how big it's going to be 1000 centimeter remember a meter has <coughs> excuse me <coughs> A meter has a hundred a meter has hundred centimeters, so I can convert this one and find that it's ten meters. But that would be the radius. So I need to multiply it by two to get the diameter. So I have to multiply this number by two to get twenty meters across. It's a big number. So if the galaxy were a nickel, the entire house, a large house will be a, a, a uh, the supercluster. The backyard will be a supercluster. Okay, so drop drop a nickel there, and the rest is other galaxies spread around. Okay, other nickels spread all throughout the the, uh, the the backyard. That will be a huge number of galaxies in there. <clears throat> and then the last part of the question problem is how big is the visible universe if I look at the table the visible universe is 13.8 billion light years so this is the visible universe it's 13.8 or 13 comma 800 million light years and the galaxy itself is only 50,000. Again, cancel this two, this zeros. That's how you do division by the other way easily. 13.8, then followed by four zeros, divided by five. For that, I'm not gonna do mental math, so I'm gonna stop sharing this thing, and I'm gonna do it on a calculator. I'm gonna share with you the calculator in here, and hopefully you guys will have an, an access to a calculator to do this thing in here. Okay, so I'm going to share again the calculator I have on my computer, which is this one in here. So this calculator says me 13, 138, followed by four zeros. So I have one, two, three, four zeros, okay, divided by five. It's telling me 276,000 centimeters. 276,000 centimeters, and each centimeter is made up of 100, I mean, each meter is made up of 100 centimeters. So if I divide it by 100, it's 2,760 meters in radius. All I have to do is just multiply this number by two times two to get the actual diameter. So it's 5,520 meters, and a kilometer has a thousand meters. So if I divide another by thousand, I will find it to be about 5.5 .5 kilometers in diameter, in diameter, yes. So the actual universe will be about five point, what happened in here? About 5.5, if I do the division and multiply by two, because this will be just the number of centimeters. Actually, then this calculation gave me 2,760 uh, meters. Actually, there was two more zeros. I divided by them centimeters. So I have to divide by two, by 100 to get rid of the centimeter and make it into meters. And I divided also by actually another thousand to get it into kilometers and multiply by two because just this is the radius, not the actual 
uh, diameter. So I have to multiply the radius by two to get the actual diameter in kilometers. Hey, it's about the city, it's about El Centro. So if you drop a nickel there in El Centro and spread in the entire city other nickels, which is gonna be billions of nickels, each and every one of them is going to be actually a, a, a galaxy. So how much money that would be? How much money would you have to go to the bank to get? So we're gonna get, let's say for example, there are 100 billion. This is 100 billion galaxies. And you would want to go tomorrow to the bank. This is not part of the question, by the way, this is further, okay? This is not part of the problem, okay? Just curious, trying to see how much money we really need to get from the bank. So I have 100 billion nickels and each one of them is five cents and five cents is five over a hundred dollars. That's what five cents is. Get rid of these two zeros. And now I have to multiply 500 times how many zeros in here? I have three zeros, I have three zeros and I have three zeros. So I really have to go to the bank and get $5 billion. And spread it throughout uh, uh, El Centro to do this experiment. If uh, the college is willing, if we can get us to borrow $5 billion from the US government, which is really a huge amount of money. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a tremendous amount of money, probably the budget of a big department in there. Then we can, we can do this experiment, okay? I don't think that the college can afford it. Is this fun to do? Would this be nice to do? Get a five billion dollars and spread throughout a central to do the experiment. Would this be fun? <laughs> yes. Okay. So the last uh, example I'm going to do from this one in here is going to be from Unit Three. As I promised, I'm going to. Uh, post the solutions on Canvas, okay? To serve as a model for you guys so that you can look at it. And that's going to be from page 24. I'm not sure if I was sharing the right screen or not, but let me share the screen nonetheless. And for that, I'm going to use a different color. So this one is going to be from page uh, 24. And it's going to be problem uh, nine, question nine. OK. And what this is saying is the following. The radius of the sun is seven times 10 to the power of five kilometers. So the radius of the sun is seven times 10 to the power of five kilometers. This is a scientific notation. I know I made a big fuss over this when I was doing the recording for the previous chapters because it's important. So uh, you guys need to watch it, okay? Make sure that you're com comfortable with that. And that of the Earth, because I'm kind of lazy, I don't want to read the whole word radius, so I'm representing it by R. But the, that of the Earth, they are telling you it's 6.4 times 10 to the power 3 kilometers. And they want to know, show that the sun's radius is approximately 100 times that of the Earth. Okay. So this is called for a, a ratio, actually. You have to do the ratio of this one over that one in here. So it's very, very important when you do the ratios to compare apples to apples. Very, very important to compare oranges to oranges. You cannot compare oranges to apples. This is not something that's going to work. Somebody tells you how orangey is the apple. Doesn't make sense. What is an orangey first of all? Okay, you have to define that. But how close from an orange it is? That doesn't make sense at all. We really need to compare about the same thing. Let's say, for example, the size of the orange and the size of the apple. 
give me both uh, sizes in centimeters or both sides in inches or both sides in whatever unit you want to use the distances and i can compare the two for you and i can tell you which one is bigger and how big it is okay why because then the units match and they can cancel so the kilometer in here and the kilometer in here they match if they don't match i have to convert at this point we are lucky enough that the units match since they match then i'm going to just do the uh, cancel them if they don't i want to reach a point where i cancel them so i need to do enough convergence to reach the same units so this is a plan of how to tackle this kind of problems so what i will do in here the units cancel so i'm good i'm left with this powers usually handle the powers first because they're the big deal they're the most important part of the problem that makes the whole question the whole answer either too big if the power is too big or make it too small if the power is too small or a negative sign so one of the two were really dominated here so that's why what drives really an answer is really the power first so after you fix the issue of the units which is step one actually before you look at the powers you look at the units make sure the units match so that you cancel them if they do you're in good shape if they don't you need to convert and you have to do enough conversions to bring you where they match then you will have to tackle the issue of the powers i have 10 to the power 5 divided by 10 to the power 3 well the rule says the following <clears throat> you put the you put the base first which is 10 and you put the numerator as is don't change its sign if it was positive keep it positive if it was negative put it negative don't change the numerator the denominator flip its sign if it was positive makes it negative if it was negative makes it positive so here the sign is positive the reason why i assume that this is positive is because nothing is written in front of it so i can put the plus sign so the plus sign or the lack thereof are the same so this is plus stays plus this is plus needs to change to negative that's it so keep sign change sign that's why taking notes at this point and writing these things is very important because it helps you see where you stand on these things you have to remember these things okay so i kept the sign positive five and i changed the sign negative three now i can do five minus three that's two actually and that's going to be the exponent of this one. 10 to the power two is 10 times 10, which is 100. So this is the same thing as saying 10 times 10, two times. That's what the two stands for in here. So that is 100. So I dealt with the units. I dealt with the powers. Now I have to deal with these numbers. Seven divided by 6.3, 6.4 that i need a calculator for it okay very good so for that i need a calculator so i'm going to stop sharing that screen and i'm going to go back to my calculator and do the difference so i'm going to share seven divided by 6.4 that turned out to be slightly more than one and because the question says that show that the sun's radius is approximately, not exactly, approximately. So 1.09, which is this number, is approximately one, slightly more than one, if you wish. Okay, so I'm going to, going to say, let me share the screen again. Oops, share screen again that the last part so i dealt <clears throat> we dealt with this one we handled this part <clears throat> we handled this part that's a hundred we need to deal with this part that according to the calculator is 1.09 i 
I am going to neglect 0, 09 in front of the one because it's very tiny. So I'll be left with one times 100 because that's what came out of the other part times half million because the units canceled. So the answer is approximately, not exactly 100. And that's what we wanted to show. That's the question actually. It says that show that the sun's earth the sun's radius is approximately 100 times the Earth's radius. This is basically the type of questions you guys will have. This is the, 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 the assignment, the kind of assignment that you will have. Let me go back into the model that we have. If I do the Earth, I mean the sun, as the soccer ball. That's about 22 centimeters. I measure this thing in here, about 2.2 centimeters, okay? I put it from the, uh, from the magnetic material in here I have in here, okay? And I rolled it into a ball, okay? So this is actually from the, this, this material in here that has a lot of elastic properties that I use for demos for other purposes. So what I have in here is I have how the earth compares to the sun. So this tiny thing in here is actually the earth. It's about two, I mean, I take 22 centimeters and divide them by 100. So it's gonna put you divided by 10 it's 2.2 centimeters divided by uh, Actually, it's slightly less. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. That is, yeah, that's correct. That's correct. We did the diameter. So this is the diameter. So that's good. Divide another 2.2 centimeters by 10 is going to give you about two tenths of a centimeter, which is about two millimeters. So this is about two millimeters. So this is the material that I pulled from this, this sticky substance in here that I use for other demos. And I can make whatever shape I want to. Actually, here it's okay. So just to give you an idea of how the sun is compared to the, uh, the earth, you need a million of this because a hundred times a hundred times a hundred has given you the volume and a hundred times a hundred times a hundred is a million. So you need a million earth to fit in the side of the sun. Obviously these insights are more than what the question is asking, but just gives you an idea how big things are and how to work out things in this case, okay? So here brings me to the last item of the discussion today, which is how do we handle this kind of problem? Because they seem to be difficult for some people and other people who have had a lot of algebra, this is not big deal. So it depends on how much background you have in math. It doesn't matter when you have an assignment of this type, here is the plan. Work in a team. Science, as part of the scientific method, is a collaborative endeavor. People work together. It's not one person. You cannot do a job by yourself. You really have to work with other people. So you need to reach out to your classmates and form a group and work with them. Research the topic. Ask me before, if you cannot proceed. Ask me during, if you have difficulty with it. Ask me after, if it doesn't make sense to you or you think that it needs further explorations. The point is, this is not an exam. This is just for you to learn. You really need to get over these things and do them to your satisfaction so that you're happy with the outcome. So you really need to learn these things and do them. This is not an exam. Homework assignments are not an exam. They're supposed to help you process these things and move along, okay? So working in teams is crucial. Find people to work with, online when it's safe. If you have to meet, make sure you observe all the guidelines in terms of health and safety and do work together. Actually, this is encouraged. This is not, you should not be ashamed of it. Actually, this is good, okay? So reach out to your classmates, ask and get into teams. The only condition I ask in this case is you have to pull your own weight. You, can net, you cannot rely on other people doing everything and you just copy things because you're only hurting yourself. You really have to do your part too, okay? 
And that's it. You should not be ashamed of working together. Actually, it's required. It's actually encouraged. Cannot require it at this point. If we're in class, I would require it because people have different conditions. So the item of the discussion is how to proceed from this point on is to work in groups. How to tackle these problems is to work in groups. Reach for help before, after, and during. Okay? So that's the third item on how to tackle problems from the book when they are assigned to you. There will be assignments. Make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay, very good. So I assume the people who are not uh, in class, and there are a lot of them, they really need to watch the recording, go through the entire recording, and basically make sure that they understand, first of all, what to answer, and also what to do. And if they have any questions, they should reach out for help. And hopefully, we can get this thing done. Sounds good? Yeah, sounds good. So I'm going to stop the recording.